A sleepy Australian city shrouded in darkness, sinister secrets lurking in the shadows, a mysterious killer on the loose, his unspeakable acts concealed under cover of night. It was a cool evening. The moonlight filtered through the trees, casting shadows across the empty sidewalks. Most homeowners had already turned in for the night, safely locked inside their homes. But one man was still prowling the darkened streets under the nighttime glare. While the residents slept peacefully unaware, a menace lingered in the shadows. For the past few months, bizarre and seemingly unrelated crimes had been plaguing the area. Women had been attacked. Home invasions had turned deadly. The random nature of the acts left law enforcement confused. Was it the work of one criminal mind or many? The people could only wonder and look over their shoulders, with a growing sense that something wasn't right. This is the chilling true story of a deadly double life. Of a shy outcast who unleashed his demons with unspeakable consequences. A relentless pursuit of justice to unmask a merciless monster hiding in plain sight. Enter the dark world of Eric Edgar Cook, the infamous Nightcaller, and discover the devastating consequences that unfold when evil hides behind a familiar face. Hello guys, and welcome back to Crimeco, where we meticulously dissect some of the most chilling true crime cases from every corner of the globe, providing you with the most recent and in-depth information. If this sparks your interest, we would be delighted if you could subscribe to the channel. Also, giving this video a like significantly supports the channel's growth. We appreciate your help. Now, grab a blanket to hide behind and let's dive into today's interesting case. Our story unfolds in Perth, the capital city of Western Australia. With its sunny Mediterranean climate and mix of British colonial architecture and modern cityscapes, Perth is sometimes called the world's most remote city, closer to Singapore than Sydney. Perth was founded in 1829 as a Swan River colony on the ancestral lands of the Nugger people. In the 1950s and 60s, Perth remained a relatively quiet city, not yet influenced by mining booms. Many residents didn't lock their doors at night. But that trusting community was shattered when terror came calling after dark. The predator knew Perth's neighborhoods and habits well, having grown up in the suburb of Victoria Park. He waited for the right moment to unleash unspeakable violence on the city. As fear gripped Perth, suspicion fell on many. But behind the horrific attacks was just one man, hiding in plain sight. His crimes would shock Perth out of its innocence and leave scars on the city's psyche for decades. No longer could Perth ignore the darkness in its midst. These chilling events made clear that evil can emerge even from the most familiar places. The Nightcaller's sinister story would illuminate the unsettling truth that sometimes monsters walk among us. On a cool evening, a young couple named Brian and Rosemary had been spending time together celebrating a birthday. They parted ways as Rosemary began the walk back to her family home, but she never arrived. The next morning, Rosemary's lifeless body was found at the side of a road. Shocked residents demanded answers from the police. What happened to this innocent young woman? And could she have been the latest victim of the unknown threat stalking the city after dark? Gradually, more disturbing details would emerge. As detectives began their investigation, they received an unexpected tip. A 19-year-old man named John had followed Rosemary in his car after they parted ways, claiming he just wanted to ensure she arrived home safely. But he expressed being startled to find her unconscious body on the roadside in the early hours of the morning. Under intense questioning, John eventually broke down and signed a written confession, admitting responsibility for the incident. With a possible suspect in custody, had the culprit finally been found? Or was there more to this case than met the eye? John steadfastly maintained his innocence, insisting his confession had been coerced. Meanwhile, evidence continued to elude police. 
That's when a mysterious man already imprisoned for crimes seemed all too eager to share secrets he'd been keeping buried. His name was Eric Edgar Cook. In 1963, five people were shot in a series of random attacks on one night in Perth. The city was gripped by terror and suspicion. The cold-blooded shooter was Eric Edgar Cook, though his identity remained unknown to Perth residents hunkered down in fear. Behind the wholesome facade of a husband and father, Cook concealed twisted desires that drove him to senseless murder. Eric Edgar Cook was born in February 1931 in Victoria Park, a suburb of Perth. His early life was mired by hardship and rejection that may have set him on a dark path. Cook's father, Vivian, was a violent alcoholic who frequently beat his son. His mother, Christine Edgar, fled her husband's house by hiding at her job. Young Cook endured beatings trying to protect her. Cook was born with a cleft lip and palate that marked him as different. Despite multiple childhood surgeries, he retained a facial deformity that made him a target for bullies. The shy boy stuttered and mumbled when speaking. Seeking escape, Cook began wandering Perth streets at night. He started small-time burglaries in arson as a troubled teen, even spending time in jail. At 21, Cook enlisted in the army, but was discharged for his criminal record. In 1953, he married Sarah Lavin and they had seven children together. But Cook was unable to control his simmering rage and alienation. Under cover of night, he unleashed vengeance on a city he felt had rejected him. For four years, Cook terrorized Perth with unpredictable attacks, shootings, stings, hit and runs, leaving residents looking over their shoulders after dark. And then what did you do? I struck him with a hatchet. Where? On the head. Cook continued his criminal urges, escalating to murder by the late 1950s. He varied his methods, shootings, stings, hit and runs, seemingly attacking at random across Perth. As the death toll rose, fear permeated the once peaceful city, but police struggled to connect the perplexing killings. Cook was hiding in plain sight among Perth's residents, his alter ego known only as the Night Caller. It would take years before justice exposed the monster behind the shadowy violence plaguing Perth. But Cook's blood rampage couldn't stay hidden forever. Justice was closing in on Eric Edgar Cook, determined to unmask the monster haunting the streets of Perth. Cook's cold brutality toward innocent victims demanded answers, and no murder can outrun the past forever. Eric Edgar Cook's murder spree inflicted tragic violence on random Perth residents between 1959 to 1963. His motives remained unclear, robbery in some cases, but primarily a desire to inflict harm. Cook varied his methods unpredictably, from shootings to stings and hidden runs. The spree began with petty crimes like burglars in 1959. But soon murders followed, women mowed down by vehicles at night, others stepped in their homes as they slept. In 1959, Cook fatally stabbed Nina Berkman multiple times as she slept. Jillian Brewer was in her apartment in 1962 with a tomahawk and scissors. Cook ran down and killed several women, like Shirley and Cleod, with stolen vehicles late at night. Of the hatchet, and where did you hit the woman with that? On the on the front of the head and on Australia Day 1963, Cook committed multiple shootings, his most notorious massacre. He murdered John Sturkey, George Walmsley, and Brian Ware by shooting them fatally at close range. Two others were severely injured. In total, Cook confessed to killing eight victims and attempting to murder 14 others, exhibiting a pattern of unrelenting brutality. Some victims were violated after death. A sinister escalation was also evident, with Coke progressing from burglaries to thrill-seeking violence. Speculation swirled about the murderer's identity, but no one could yet comprehend all these crimes were committed by just one man. 
Perth was in panic after Cook's infamous 1963 rampage on Australia Day, which killed two and injured three. With Perth held hostage to shadowy violence, police intensified the investigation. Extensive fingerprinting and test firing of rifles ultimately uncovered key forensic evidence. Blood, fingerprints and firearms analysis would play a crucial role. In August 1963, ballistic tests connected a rifle found hidden in bushes to the murder of Shirley MacLeod. Staking out the scene, police snared Cook returning for the weapon and placed him under arrest. Finally in custody, detectives pressured Cook to admit the full extent of his crimes. After initial denials, he shocked police with detailed confessions to eight murders, 14 attempted murders, and over 250 burglars haunting Perth since 1959, a rampage by one perpetrator unparalleled in Australia. The investigation ended Cook's four-year reign of terror. But with no clear motive beyond guilty and control, Cook's horrific acts spread fear across Perth. His brazen attack would provide the evidence needed to finally unmask the night caller. After years in the shadows, Cook's name would become forever synonymous with evil in Perth. Delivering justice to the night caller's victims required unraveling the baffling intricacies of this unprecedented serial case. After confessing to eight months, Eric Edgar Cook's day of reckoning had arrived. His trial in November 1963 riveted Perth as the depraved details of the night caller's crimes emerged. Cook pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. His defense argued he had schizophrenia and uncontrolled urges. But the prosecution demonstrated Cook's systematic planning and awareness of his crimes. The jury heard Cook's first-hand accounts of his shootings, and hit-and runs. His chilling lack of remorse or empathy for innocent victims shocked the courtroom. Cook seemed to crave notoriety. In the end, the jury rejected Cook's insanity defense. He was found guilty of murdering John Sturkey and sentenced to death by hanging. The verdict marked the end of Cook's four-year reign of terror from Perth's shadows. On October 26, 1964, Eric Edgar Cook was at Fremantle Prison, the last man ever hanged in Western Australia. Even facing the gallows, he showed no regret for destroying so many lives. A violent man, unable to rein in his darkest compulsions, had met a violent end. For police, prosecutors, and victims' families, Cook's conviction brought closure after years living in fear but Perth would be forever changed. The night caller's sadistic crimes ended an era of innocence in the city, leaving wounds that no punishment could fully heal. Eric Edgar Cook's execution removed an apex predator from Perth's streets. But the deep wounds inflicted on the community remained. Fear faded, but not memories of the night caller's shadowy brutality. Cook's of Rosemary Anderson had wrongfully implicated 19-year-old John Button, who served five years before being exonerated decades later when Cook's full crimes came to light. The miscarriage of justice highlighted flaws in the legal system, spurring reforms like appointing independent experts for appeals rather than relying solely on police and prosecutors. Broader changes also followed, including tighter control and improved protections for vulnerable groups targeted by Cook. No longer could Perth ignore those slipping through the cracks. Most importantly, the Nightcaller's legacy ensures Perth will never forget the innocents who fell prey to the darkness. Organizations honor victims by helping women and youth escape violence. Though evil lurked within him, Cook failed to destroy Perth's spirit. Instead, the city emerged wiser and committed to nurturing light. The night caller slipped into history's shadows, but hope persevered to overcome fear. Eric Edgar Cook's vicious murder finally came to an end with his capture and execution in the 1960s. But the damage he inflicted lingered on. Perth struggled to regain a sense of safety and security after being taken for so many years by the Nedlands monster.
and the wrongful convictions of Beamish and Button highlighted flaws in the justice system that threatened faith in the courts. Perth has worked hard to heal the scars left behind and has grown into a vibrant, welcoming city. But the memory of Cook's crimes will never fully fade. His story serves as a sobering reminder that evil can lurk in even the most unlikely places. But it also highlights the resilience of community in the face of tragedy. If any good can come from such a tragedy, it is renewed commitment to justice, transparency, and compassion. There are still lessons to be learned from the darkest chapters of our past. The reign of Eric Edgar Cook left Perth forever changed. But from the ashes of tragedy, there is hope that a stronger city may rise. The Nedlands monster shook Perth to its core, but he did not break its spirit. There is still light even in the longest of nights. This concludes our today's tale about the notorious case of serial killer Eric Edgar Cook. His horrific crimes plunged Perth into darkness, but ultimately brought about change. By learning from the past, we can work towards a brighter future. Before you leave, please remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notification bell. This will ensure you stay informed about the latest true crime cases we uncover. We're grateful to have you as part of our community as we explore the captivating mysteries that continue to fascinate us all. Stay curious and vigilant that even closed books still hold untold pages waiting patient revelation. We eagerly anticipate seeing you in our next exploration. Until next time.